way uh, through through this, it's so to speak. So, yes. I mean, if you read something like Wikipedia, I sort of cringe and go, ugh, you know. And yet there are there are people, and I've seen them, who will go around and they will quote their sources as Wikipedia. Sure, sure. Well, I'm sorry, you know. What are you saying? Cool you, but there's, uh, you know, again, there's it's it's a huge one of the world's largest encyclop- encyclopedia, so it must be, you know, <coughs> I, I definitely get your point. I mean, it's it's just because it's on there, it doesn't make it true, but it doesn't make it false either. You know, it's issue by no, issue basis, what, post I by mean, post. By, look, I use it myself. Yes. Don't get me wrong. Sure. I will go and I'll say, okay, it says that. What's the source? Yeah. Okay. Second. Go to the source and find out what the source says. Absolutely. That's what you have to do. Absolutely. Totally agree. Um, if if we return, talk about um, a little bit of the Da Vinci issue here again. The the yep. uh, the Sinclairs, the importance of the Sinclairs. There's something that is mentioned. You were referring yourself previously to some of the work that uh, Hugh Sinclair were doing. Uh, important yep. family, not uh, you know. Is this tr- any truth to this? What what what's your take on it? Uh, um. The Sinclairs became an important family in Scotland. Um, Where the name Sinclair actually comes from, I think, is in some dispute. Um, There's various suggestions that it came, they took the name from Sinclair sur Ept, and that they were related to Rollo, or descendants from Rollo. Um, I am not sure that that is the answer, but I do think, because I have found a Lord Sinclair and, um, I forget now what his other name, he had two, two, two names, two titles, Mm -hmm. um, did marry into the family of the Duke of Normandy. Okay. So by 1100... They were certainly, um, if you like, part of that group of families who were all into marrying. But um, I, I simply don't know the answer to that. I mean, the the, the story that that's in the Da Vinci Code about the Saunier and Sinclair, etc., is, is, is fiction. Mm. You know? mm. um, but. As regards um, the rest of it, I, I simply don't know is the answer. Yeah, I yeah. haven't really done enough work on it to make a a decision one way or other. That they were that they are an Olvunga family is almost certainly correct. Mm-hmm. Certainly, the DNA evidence that's coming out mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> makes that very clear. And- but. Mm-hmm. Apart from that, I don't know where they fit into the picture. Okay, I see. And uh, but uh, was it Hugh Sinclair that himself were doing a lot of? Uh, uh, yeah, Doctor Hugh Sinclair. He 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 did a a lot of work on on the genealogy of the Sinclairs. Mm-hmm. And <coughs> he, uh, what we actually have is some scribbled notes of his. Okay, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which um, another Sinclair actually um, scanned into uh, a thing and put on the internet. And I rang him and said, you know, is this okay? He said, yes, you know, these are the actual notes, that, the, the scribbled notes that, that Hugh made. I said, okay, fine. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's what they are. Now, what documents he based those scribbled notes on Unfortunately, we don't know. I suspect that he got hold of copies of the same documents that I've got, mm-hmm. but that he um, came to slightly different conclusions. But then he was looking at it from the point of view of a Sinclair lineage rather than what I was looking at, which was simply an Albunga dynasty. Yeah, the, the bigger picture, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, well that that's interesting, and and again I know weren't you in contact also a little bit with uh, William F. Mann as another one we had on on the show a while back? Yes, William. Well, I mean, 
I've been in contact with him by email. Mm -hmm. I've never met the guy. All right. But certainly he is one of the people who is running this Sinclair DNA project. Yes. And um, certainly it would appear from the DNA that they are doing that the documentary evidence um, I have uh, produced is backed up by the DNA evidence that they have. Mm, okay. That's interesting. But as I said, I mean, I do not understand DNA, and therefore I have to go along with what someone tells me. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't pretend to understand it, because it's, I'm afraid that's um, not one of the things I've got my mind around. No, it's a, it's a completely a different different area, and, and again, as you said, there seems to be a lot of these different projects around to to find either descendants or even to find uh, specific you know origins and even placements on on the world so it's 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 a huge and again this is a topic or an area of research that really have just uh, opened up as it were and and we try the best we can i guess to try tie this back there's the genealogical well, project and whatever you know so there's awful lot I of think, this around yeah i think the other thing that one must be careful of about dna is that there are commercial firms who are running ahead of the academic world on this. Mm -hmm. um, for example, I think I'm right in saying this, but don't hold me to it, that the maximum number of markers is about 19, which is accepted by, if you like, um, King's College London, for example, mm -hmm. which is one of the main centers for this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, while as some of the commercial firms are talking about 52 markers. Well, I mean, I've got no idea if this is valid or not. I simply don't know. Okay, yeah. So it could be a, a way to, yeah, get maybe lure people into this area and, and, and tell them stuff that uh, might not... That. Yeah. <laughs> right. I didn't say that. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll, I'll read between the lines and it's, it remains unsaid. No, no worries, okay. I, I'm merely saying that the um, commerce is running ahead of academia. Yes. Mind you, sometimes it does. I mean, you know, if you think about it, Microsoft ran ahead of academia for years. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But they were right. And and well, exactly. And that was my point uh, previously when I when I stated that academia, just because you're not in that environment, doesn't mean that you don't have a have a valid idea or a valid theory right, or something exactly. going. So yeah, yeah. absolutely. It, it, I suppose the main difference is that in academia you tend to be peer reviewed. Mm, yeah. While as in non academic circles you're probably not. See what you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that acts as a um well I don't know, I suppose a certain policing of of of, of things to an extent. Yeah, well uh, but, it's 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 a very it's 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 something actually that is um, by no means agreed by everybody. Well, exactly, and 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 that's where it's kind of free for all also to begin criticize work and research well, and you know on that level. So yeah. it's and it's good that it's being done. I mean, again, it's 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 nothing negative at all. It it certainly must stand up to criticism in order for for it to be you know validated well, or well, you know. So so that's very good. I mean, I'll, I'll be perfectly frank. What a, one of my first books, or in fact, my first book was was slaughtered by a um, a Cambridge Don. Okay, there you go. Yeah. And um, because he said it couldn't possibly be right. But then you look at the guy and you say, well, what's he done? Mm. And the answer is, of course, he's a a librarian in a particular college who's published a few things in in, in academic journals. But guess what? He is a fervent Catholic and a member of Opus Dei. Mm, there you go. <laughs> okay. So you think, oh, okay. Yes, yes. Absolutely. Uh, you know, um, even, even sort of when you're talking about sort of academic criticism, one wants to look at the academic and say, well, does he have an axe to grind? Right, well, exactly. And, and that's in, in one degree a little bit you know, guilty by association, so to speak. I mean, for instance, if we have a Knights Templar involved in this type of research, that would make him biased? Would you, would, do you think that that's 
correct to say something like that? Sorry? Uh, would you say that that's correct to say that's, that's, for instance, one is guilty, if you if you know what I mean, by association, if one is, for instance, involved in, in uh, the Knights Templar and doing uh, genealogical research for the descendants of Jesus, that there is a biased or another uh, b- background here, so to speak, that the... the The person in, we're talking about have an axe to grind think, think, in that in that sense. Yeah, I mean, my my question in that case would be: Have you got a position that you're trying to prove, or are you simply looking at documents and seeing what the documents say? Mm-hmm. And are you also are you excluding documents that don't go along with what you want them to say? Yeah, well, exactly. You're cherry picking the the evidence, yeah. as it were. Yeah. And you know, and this is this is the danger. And um, I mean, I try desperately not to do that. Mm. But I don't know. Maybe there are other documents there that I don't know about because I haven't looked for them. Mm. Mm. You know. Yeah, yeah. And that's where there again, the criticism is is good because it helps to bring new research and other new areas to to light, Absolutely. and where people can re- refine it. So that that's very good. Um, maybe we can spend uh, the, the last few minutes here just talk a little bit about uh, something that that uh, you wrote about in in your latest book, and that has to do with the uh, uh, the dynasty of the, of of the Black Madonna. I don't know if there's much to this or if this is a huge area, but maybe you can just tell us a little bit about this. I was just intrigued by the the general idea or when I when I spotted it, so to speak, in your book. Okay, um, I said to you that. Um, in my opinion, Mary Magdalene was the daughter of John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. First of all, there is a tradition in Eastern Europe, uh, particularly amongst some of the icons, of a black John the Baptist. Um, Secondly, um, the idea of Ethiopian, and I I say Ethiopian as opposed to Ethiopian, because it simply means in Greek the land of the burnt-faced people. Yes, yes. And they wouldn't have just called, should we say, Sudanese or Ethiopians that. They would have equal called the people of the um, Arabian Peninsula that, because they were dark-skinned, basically. They, you know, they weren't Caucasian, they were Semitic. Yes. And the point that I was trying to make was that Mary Magdalene was very dark-skinned as were all the Nabataeans, Petrons, etc. Mm-hmm, or at least the, 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 the main um, sort of um, see, top, top people there. Mm-hmm. Now, that being the case, um, this whole idea of the devotion to the Black Madonna, and if you like, a lineage which sometimes throws up some rather dark-skinned people, mm-hmm. may well descend from the marriage of, of Mary Magdalene and Jesus. Mm. But Jesus himself wasn't white, for goodness sake, anyway. Sure, you know, sure. He was a Semite. Mm. So, you know, they, he was dark-skinned, probably, by our standards. And But I suspect that Mary Magdalene was particularly dark. Mm. And this is what um, we can see replicated in many cathedrals today, then, the veneration of this, or the, the verification, I guess, of, of this. Well, that's the point. I mean, the, you know, people have written books about the Black Madonnas. Yes. Uh, and everyone's, you know, the church is trying to pretend that uh, this is a sort of black version of the, Mar- of, of the Virgin Mary. Well, I have my doubts. <laughs> um, I would say that it's much more likely that Mary Magdalene finished up, or certainly went to southern France at some stage or other, because there are a lot of documentation which shows that. And therefore, um, she would have possibly stood out there. And if she had a child or children, she would, and if she was related to this um, mythical figure, Jesus, in some way, shape, or form, mm. 